Relations, Lesson 7, Problems Using Arithmetic Sequences. Example number one, insert three numbers between 31 and 43 so that the numbers form an arithmetic sequence. Well, let's break this down. First, when we're looking at this problem, we know that we're putting in three numbers between 31 and 43 and that those three numbers must form an arithmetic sequence, which means I've got to add or subtract the same amount to move from one term to the next. So let's start by creating a visual. We have 31, three numbers in between, and then 43. So if this is an arithmetic sequence, 31 would be considered my first term or t to the one. 43 would be the fifth term in the sequence, or could be considered t to the n. So I now am going to take my inventory so that I can use my formula for arithmetic sequences. First, t to the n. Well, that is the value of the n term. In this case, that is 43. t to the 1 is my first term. In this case, my first term is 31 n is the number of terms in the sequence. Since 43 is my fifth term, my number of terms is 5. And the one unknown that I don't have is the common difference. Now, since this is an arithmetic sequence, I can use my arithmetic sequence formula to find my common difference. I'm now going to substitute in the values that I've got. t to the n is 43. My first term, or t to the 1, is 31. n is 5, because there's 5 terms in the sequence. And d is my unknown. At this point, I'm going to have to work backwards to solve for d. First, before I can do anything, I'm going to have to get rid of the brackets. 5 minus 1 is 4d. At this point, 43 equals 31 plus 4d. To isolate for D, I've got to get rid of 31 and 4. I've decided I'm going to get rid of 31 first. What is 31 doing to D? It is adding, so I'm going to subtract 31 from both sides, leaving me with 43 minus 31 is 12 equals 4D. I now need to get rid of D. D is being multiplied by 4, so to get rid of 4, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Therefore, my common difference is 3. I now have enough information to answer the question. My first number was 31. To get to my next number, I'm going to add a common difference of 3, giving me 34. I add, to get to my third number, I add a common difference of 3, which gives me 37. To get to my fourth number, I add a common difference of 3 to give me 40. Now, if I've done this right, I should be able to add my final 3 and get my t to the 5 or my fifth term. And that is correct. Therefore, my answer is 34, 37, and 40 are the three numbers that I would insert. Example 2. This is a visual problem. Each square in the pattern has a side length of one unit. Assume the pattern continues. A. Write the general term where the perimeter is a function of the figure number. At this point, I've got to determine whether this is an arithmetic sequence. So I'm going to create a chart to organize my information. So figure number is the same thing as term. So for my first term, my perimeter or distance around the object is 4. For figure number 2 or term 2, my perimeter or distance around the object is 6. Figure number 3, my distance around the object is 8. Now, how do I know that this is an arithmetic sequence? Well, to go from 4 to 6, I add 2. To go from 6 to 8, I add 2. Therefore, I'm adding a constant difference. So. To write the general term, I'm going to need to take my inventory. So t to the n, well, I don't know the value of the n term 
because they haven't told me any value for the n term. t to the 1 or my first term is 4. n. Again, I don't know how many terms there are in the sequence. And d, we figured out that to go from 4 to 6, we add 2. To go from 6 to 8, we add 2. So I can now put up my general formula for arithmetic sequences, and I can simplify this down to the general term. I'm going to substitute in the values I know. t to the n is my unknown. t to the 1, or my first term, is 4. n is another unknown, since I don't know how many terms there are in the sequence. And d, or what I add to move from one term to the next, is 2. At this point, all I can do is simplify the formula. To simplify the formula, I've got to get rid of the brackets. The brackets are there because I am multiplying n minus 1 by 2. So to get rid of them, I'm going to multiply or use the distributive law to get rid of the brackets. So 2 times n is 2n. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. I now have t to the n is equal to 4 plus 2n minus 2. I'm going to combine my like terms. 4 minus 2 is 2. So my final answer, or my general term, is t to the n is equal to 2n plus 2. Or you could consider this as perimeter, or p is equal to 2n plus 2. Both of these would be considered correct. b. Determine the perimeter for the 24th figure using the formula. Now we could use the original formula, but it only makes sense to be more efficient and use the general term we've been given. At this point, I'm asked to find the perimeter, so I'm looking for p when the figure number is 24 or n is 24. So that means I'm going to substitute 24 in for n. I now have multiplying and adding. Bedmass says I do multiplying before I do adding, so I'm going to write out p is equal to 48, or 2 times 24, plus 2. I now am just going to add my final two values together, giving me a perimeter of 50 for the 24th figure. C. Which figure has a perimeter of 128? In this case, I'm told the perimeter, and I want to know which figure, or n. So I write out my general term. I substitute 128 in for p. I'm now going to work backwards to get n alone. To remove the adding 2, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, giving me 126 is equal to 2n. To remove the 2 being multiplied by n, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is divide both sides by 2, which gives me 126 divided by 2 is 63, or the 63rd figure has a perimeter of 128. Example 3. Jimmy gets a new job requiring some travel. To compensate him, his employer pays him $64 for one hour's work, $85 for two hours' work, $106 for three hours' work. The remainder of his pay forms an arithmetic sequence. Find the general term. Well, first, let's organize this down in a chart. Is it absolutely necessary? No, but I recommend it. So, in my inventory, my term number is the same as my hours worked. So, if t to the 1, he works one hour and is paid $64. Term 2, he is paid he works two hours and is paid $85. Term three, he works three hours and pay, is paid $106. Now, if this is an arithmetic sequence, I'm adding a common amount of 21. So, I'm now going to do my inventory. First, my first term, or his first hour's pay, is 64. t to the n well, in a general term, we aren't told the t to the n, so that's an unknown. n. I don't know how many terms there are in this sequence. Therefore, n is also unknown. Finally, d or 
the common amount that I add or subtract to go from one term to the next is 21. At this point, I write out my original formula for arithmetic sequences. At this point, I'm going to fill in the values I know. I don't know t to the n because I don't know how many terms there are in this sequence. I do know t to the 1 is 64. I don't know the number of terms, so n is still an unknown. But I do know what d is, or my common difference, which is 21. Now, I'm just going to simplify this formula. To simplify it, I've got to get rid of the brackets. The brackets are there because I am multiplying n minus 1 times 21. So to get rid of them, I'm going to have to use the distributive law and multiply both terms in the bracket by 21. 21 times n is 21n. 21, 21 times negative 1 is negative 21. I now have two constants I can add together. 64 minus 21 is 43. So my final answer is t to the n is equal to 21n plus 43. That would be my general term. B. How much does Jimmy get paid for 36 hours of work? Now, we're going to do this using the original formula as well as the general formula. They should give us the same answer. So, using the original formula, I write out my formula. I'm now going to substitute in the values I know. t to the n is my unknown, or my 36th term. t to the 1 is 64. n, or the number of hours worked, is 36. And d, my common difference is still 21. I'm now going to uh, wind up solving for the 36th term. That math says I've got to do adding, I've got to do brackets before I do multiplying or adding. So 36 minus 1 is 35. That math says I've got to do multiplying before I do adding. So I'm going to multiply 35 times 21, which gives me 735. Finally, I'm going to add 64 and 735, which gives me the 36th term in this sequence is 799. I'm now going to do the same thing, but using the general formula. So my general form is written above, which was t to the n is equal to 21n plus 43. If my general form is correct, I should get the same answer as I did for the first calculation. Now, I'm still looking for t to the 36, and, but now I know that the number of terms in the sequence is 36, so I substitute 36 in for n. At this point, bed mass says I do multiplying before I do adding. So, 21 times 36 is 756. Finally, I'm going to add 756 and 43, giving me an answer of 799. So, using this answer, my 36th term is also 799. Thus, using both methods, Jimmy earned $799 when working 36 hours. I now know that my general form must be correct.